Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we're going to have a good time making a simple but effective dog collar. Now I say simple, that's exactly right, because right here we have two empty canvases. All kinds of ways we can go both with design and decoration. But let's keep it easy. Let's get a feel for both the collar and the lead. From there, take that ball and run with it. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to our website. So first off, let's look at a couple of samples. We could always go with a trunk handle. Age old, common design, extremely strong, very easy to make. We've got a video on making a trunk handle. Easy transition from handle over to collar. We're going to go with a simple strap. If we use veg tan, now we can add all manner of stamp designs, tooling, spots, antique, dye. We could even match our dog. But also too, one of my favorites, the worst nightmare for a pet owner is to lose their pet. Let's stamp our phone number right in the collar. We're going to go with this design. We're going to drop that D-ring right in the middle for a very specific reason. So let's step over to our pattern table. We're going to look at our pattern both for the collar and our lead. This may look like a complicated pattern, but it really isn't. Every bit of this is easy. But here's the big point. We're doing this to make it easier on ourselves to make one collar and many more if we want to. Same with our lead. So let's start right here with our collar. Digital pick. Right at the top almost a standard belt pattern. We've got a one inch spread for our rivets on our left side, two inch spread for our oblong, and on the other end, one inch spread, six holes, and then we've got a two inch spread to our English point. Now, to explain our red lines, what we're doing here is I can make a pattern right here. I call it a shorty, not an industry term, but I do the, th do, do the same thing with my belt. What I can do is measure between my two red lines that's our actual neck size. Add eight and a half inches to that, and we have our blank size. We have our strap size. So what I can do is butt this to one end, mark my holes, butt it to the other end, mark my holes, and I've got a perfect fit every time right to the second hole. Second thing, we've got our D-ring right here in the middle, and here's why. If you ever notice, when we put our collar on our dog, because of gravity and the weight of that buckle, it always goes straight down and it stays there. If we've got a D down here and we pull that, well, that's got to be irritating to our dog. So let's work with that. We're going to drop our D ring right between our two red lines. We're just going to center that. Now, when we jump over to our lead, now a nice side, we can get seven or eight feet of length out of that. Well, not all of us can afford a side. We're crafters. So what we're going to do, Let's break this in half. We're simply going to rivet two pieces together. And even at 24 inches, which easily will come out of a single shoulder, now I've got a 48 inch lead. What I'm going to do there, let's add our billet onto the end. That gives us a little more length. And right here on our handle, let's add an additional piece there. So therefore, 48 inches with our lead and our billet, we've got almost a five foot lead. That's ample room. So let's do this. Let's take our pattern. Now I've, got, I've cut this ready to go at 19 inches. Our dog, 19 inches. And then I've added our eight and a half for our strap length. So let's step over to our main table, cut some leather. Couple of points before we start cutting. First off, I've transferred our pattern from paper over to our plastic sheeting. Cool point here. These four pieces never change. So we can use this pattern over and over. This is the only thing that will change. Secondly, we're going one inch wide for everything. Now, typically you see leads in about three quarters inch, maybe five eighths of an inch, but we're gonna go with one so it's easy. Last point, we're gonna use a seven to eight ounce holster leather. Love this, pre-dyed veg tan. It's gonna be gorgeous when we put in a top coat. But the point is, we can always increase or decrease our collar, our D, our lead. We can play with this. But again, a seven to eight ounce is going to be good for maybe 15 to 30 pound dog. With our, with our straps, we can cut these by hand absolutely. But I'm going to use my wooden strap cutter. And I'm going to set this at one inch. So let's cut enough strapping here to make our pattern. And two straps. Okay, that should do it. So let's cut our leather to length. Hey, 
And two straps, very little waste. Good, that worked out nicely, okay? Let's take our awl and let's mark for our holes. And our last four holes. But notice too, everything is gonna line up super easy because we've got a half inch in and then we've got a one inch spread for all of our connections. Okay, we're marked, let's punch our holes. Now we're gonna use rivets instead of Chicago screws. If we've got a heavier dog, we can always bump up the screws very strong. But the point here is that I'm gonna use about the second hole up, the second tube up on my revolving punch. That's gonna keep my rivet snug in the hole. That's gonna give us our best bite. So let's punch holes everywhere except right here for our size holes. I'm going to bump that up just a little bit, maybe our fourth tube. Now, when we get down to our size holes, like I said, let's come up to about the, the fourth tube. Give us a little bit larger hole there for our buckle prong. Okay, everything looks good. Let's step over to our punch table. We're gonna drop in our round end, our English point, and our oblong. Not all of us have all of the tools. We're gonna to do an English point, which is simply our belt tip. But if we don't have our tools, what we can do is create a paper pattern, fold that over, cut it, and now I've got a perfectly symmetrical template. Same with my round end. On our oblong, again, if we don't have the tools, best way to go, but we can always punch two holes and then cut between them. It's not perfect, but you know what? When we bend that back, no one will ever notice that that was hand cut. On my pattern, typically, I'll go ahead and punch my pattern where I need it. Yeah, it's a little hard to see it over the white background here, but I've got my English point there, I've got my round in there, and I've got my oblong mark. Now on this leash, relatively easy to figure out what goes where. So I'm gonna take my billet for my, for my lead, and let's drop in our round in punch, both ends. Okay, looks good. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the balance of our pieces. When we jump over to our collar, let's drop in our rounded. Now this is not absolutely necessary. That's where we're gonna bend back, but it certainly adds a nice touch. So on our oblong, typically rule of thumb, one inch strap, one inch oblong. But I'm at one and a quarter inch. I'm gonna go a little bit longer just so I have ample room for that buckle bar to bend around. There we go, clean and straight. And our last punch, we're gonna use our English point on the end of our collar. Okay, everything's working on going south, always happens. All right, so we're ready to jump over to our main table. We're gonna do our edge work. We're gonna drop in a groove and a bevel and then slick our edges. Let's start with our groover. Now, again, if you're new to leather, this is simply going to cut a groove in the edge of our leather. Primary job here is for hand sewing. We're gonna drop our stitch line into that. It gives us a good guide. But you'll notice I use my groover everywhere. To me, it just dresses up the edge. Easy tool to use. We've got a guide arm and a cutting head. I'm gonna butt that arm against my leather. I'm gonna give it a little counterclockwise pressure. And there we go. Clean and tight, looks good. Now we can add multiple grooves. But the problem is, let's don't go too deep because then we create a tab that's gonna tear off. So let's groove all of our pieces. Now, on one point, if you're not comfortable going around the end, that can be a little more difficult. With this, you can, right here, notice I went right off the end because if you're not comfortable here, no groove is gonna look better than a bad groove. And our last round in, okay? We're gonna jump over to a bevel. This is a number two. This is good for seven to eight, eight to nine, maybe nine to 10. But if you think of bevel glass, we're doing the same thing. We're gonna knock off this hard top edge from our edge. Now, you'll notice I keep pulling this piece out basically as an example. But all told, it's a good idea to take a piece of scrap, whatever we're using, and let's go ahead and practice before we go over to our main, our main project. So right here, same thing. Let's lean back. I'm going to drop the corner of that leather right in my V.
and there we go. Now I typically don't bevel my ends because we've got a punch there. That edge is already curved out. So what I'm going to do is both front sides and both back sides on all of my straps. And our last piece. Now, the skive or the flesh side, it's not always going to bevel as well as the, uh, the top grain. But nonetheless, we're on our way to a rounded edge. So I'm going to clean this up. Let's slick our edges. When we're slicking our edge, we're simply going to use some water. And this is one of our dressing sponges. I'm going to put a little bit of water on my edge. But notice I'm going to hold this. So therefore, water isn't going to run across the face of my leather just in case I've got a lighter colored dye or no dye at all. So let's get our edges good and wet there. We're going to take our slicker. Now this bottom groove, that's going to be just right for a 7 to 8. So let's run this back and forth maybe a dozen times. Pressure not the point here. More heat and friction. There we go. Okay, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but my edge is now rounded. It's slicked. It's got a little bit of gloss to it, but it feels good. It's going to make the handle and the collar comfortable for us and our pet. So I'm going to do the same thing to the rest of the pieces. And our last piece. Okay, let's give this about a half an hour to dry. Let those edges dry. In that time, I'm going to reset here because we're going to add some top coat. Notice it's a little flat. Well, we're going to take care of that. We're going to use a leather balm for this, one of my favorites. No ventilation required, easy on, easy buff, and it's going to enrich in our dye color. So with this, I've got two rags. I'm going to call this a wet rag and a dry rag. I'm going to apply here, buff with this. So let's drop some on our strap. There we go, get a good coat on that. Now, let's take our dry rag going to wipe off some of the excess and now let's start to buff this. We're going to buff easily. We don't really have to press hard, but with just a little bit of buffing. Look at that gloss. Very professional looking. So what I'm going to do is the same here and the same on the rest of my straps. Good. World of difference. In fact, notice the difference between the top coat and the piece without. All right, let's do this. Let's go back over our edges one more time. Let's just run some, some balm down our edge. Now let's work that edge just a little bit more. And our last strap, okay, let's see if we can see it. There we go. There's some of that gloss. Is that not professional? And thus far, how easy has this been? All right, we're going to step over to our punch table, assemble our leash, our lead, then we're going to look at some design options. Sometimes with leather work, the toughest part is to get all of your hardware to match. Not always possible. But right here, we're going to go with antique brass. And at Weaver, we have the clip, D, buckle, and rivets. So everything's going to match nicely. Now on our buckle, we're going to go with a center bar buckle. Notice the bars at the center. We don't need a keeper. Here's what I'm talking about. There's a keeper. So with a heel bar buckle, bars at the heel, we've got to make or add a keeper. We're going to keep it easy here. So let's do this. We've got a little slot. That's the front of the buckle, obviously. So let's come through from the back side. I'm going to pull that down through the front and let's let that tine slide right through our oblong. So there we go. Our buckle is set correctly. We're going to use two sizes of rivets. We've got a medium and a large and a double cap, 5 16 and 7 16 So the medium or the 5 16 is what we're going to use for two ply. So let's lay this on the edge of our quartz so therefore that buckle bow can hang off the table. Let's push that through. Now I've got a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. That's what I want. If I've got too much there, it's going to offset when I set it. So let's take our setter. Con there we go in the shot, concaved in. There we go. Well set rivet. It sunk into my leather just a little bit. Okay, let's set our second. There we go. Notice how our pattern, that fit right in there. That's what we're looking for. We took time on our pattern. That's going to pay off for us. Okay, let's jump up to this small billet. Now we're going to jump over to a large double cap. Now these caps are interchangeable, 
But right here, this is going to work best for three plies of seven to eight or eight to nine. Now let's don't forget our D. Easy to do. Done it. A, done it more times than I, I care to admit. Now we've still got a little bit left, maybe about a sixteenth. That again going to set well. Good. That is solid, sturdy, and that looks good. Well, so how easy was that? Our collar is ready to go. One cool point with our with our tags on our pups. We can always drop our split ring onto this with our ID or maybe say our, our rabies information. Always right there, easy to see. Let's step over to our lead. So we've got our two pieces here. Does not matter which end goes with which, but let's start down here. I'm going to drop in a clip. We're going to go back to our large or 7 16th inch rivets. Bend that over, and there we go. Everything fits nicely. So let's drop in our caps and do the same thing. Okay, so we know which end is which. Let's do the same on the other end. We're going to take our other strap. We're just doing it this way to keep from getting confused. We're going to add our handle. And again, three ply, so we're going to need our longer rivets. Okay, so our handle's in. Well, now it's easy. Let's take these two pieces, clip on one end, handle on the other. Now we can drop back to our medium rivets because now we're going to go through two, just two ply. But what I tend to do is take my piece from the top. Let's lay that on the outside. No real reason. That to me just looks a little bit better. Well, how about that? We're done. Assembly is complete and we have a beautiful lead. We'll take another look at this, but let's step over. We've got some areas where we can be very creative. We have got a very professional, beautiful collar and lead. And you know what? Not one step on this was difficult. Okay, let's look at some options. Because we don't have all the length we want, seven or eight feet, we're splitting this. Well, we can make this as long as we want, but let's do this. How about we add a clip on the end of our handle piece and an O-ring where our split would be and a clip on the other end. So therefore, even though we don't have length, now we've got a short lead and a long lead. We've actually made that work for us. All kinds of cool, creative ways we can make this connection. Over on our decoration, again, tooling, stamps, die, antique. Right here, I'm simply, I'm simply using the smallest of the antique brass rivets, dropping those in every two inches, both on collar and lead. So how many folks do you know that have a matching set that beautiful? And if we dye our own veg tan, we can actually make our collar and lead match our dog. Buckles, unlimited possibilities. We can always do some beautiful edge lacing. Wouldn't that make a good collar? On our handle, let's simply go with a basket, uh, with a, uh, a mystery braid. Looks good, comfortable in our hand, and very sturdy. Now, one point. As our dog, as we bump up weight in our dog, larger dog, I would say let's go with a Chicago screw for our connections. That's going to add a good bit of strength. So if we've got a lot of dog, that's going to be a big help to us. It's hard for me not to, not to decorate a project, but that's not the point of this video. Let's get a feel for our pattern, for making one, and for the infinite possibilities in design and decoration. That to me is my favorite part. So with that behind us, I hope every collar and lead you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects. <music>